what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle, and I'm back at you with another two section staff technique. Now, this is the technique that broke my old two section staff. I'm trying to read that person, and then from there, boom. <laughs> it's really, it had nothing to do with my power. It had everything to do with the wood that I chose to make the two section staff. However, this is the one that I built, and I show you guys how to do it. It's super easy. All you need to do is pick up some of these shackles. You can order these. They ship anywhere. They're small. It's not a huge box that you have to try to figure out for shipping, and they're really cheap too. So you can just buy wood and make it yourself. You can follow this link right here and learn how to do it on your own. Now, today's technique is just a series of strikes. We're focusing on the practical end of the two section staff. We're working on low strikes, high strikes, and striking straight down. It's a very simple setup, but this is a nice way to practice your practical striking. So let's go get to work. All right, before we get into this, I want you to make sure you have a good grip on the staff. Usually in Choi Le Fat, we do uh, the backhand grips all the way down to the very bottom of the staff. You don't want any of it showing. So this is typical for staff technique. However, this is two section staff. We do a lot of hand changes. We do a little bit of hand sliding. So it's okay to have some room here below your bottom hand. The thumbs are gonna point in the same direction. This is a single end staff style. And when I poke, I will point the fingers. When I'm swinging the staff the rest of the time, I wanna make sure I have a nice solid grip on the staff. Now, when we do poke, we want to think of it as a spearing technique. So you have the shackle on the, the weapon itself, and you wanna think of right here, this, this little ring that sticks out. This is like your spearhead. Yeah, it's not sharp, it's not pointed, but it's still a concentrated point of metal that's going to really pierce. It's going to feel awful when you're striking inward rather than trying to hit with just the bottom end with the wood. So when we do the poke, think of spearing with this end here, all right? The rest of the strikes, take your time on. We are gonna be doing things where you're swinging, but you always wanna make sure the staff stays in front of your body. Okay, so try not to worry about getting so much power and then having these huge windups where you put the staff behind your body. Two problems can happen here. One, you could end up with this back end swinging and hitting yourself. And two, and more importantly, you have the chance of opening up yourself for counter attack. If I swing up here, my staff is still forward. I've accomplished what I needed to. And if my opponent moves in, I can use the staff to strike downward or come across. I have lots of options here. However, if I try to go back behind me, now my options are very limited to what I can use to block and how fast I can get there. Okay, so make sure staff always stays in front of the body here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's get to work. Okay, to start off, we're going to use a horse stance position. I'm going to raise it up so it's a nice straight line when I do spear out. Again, hitting with the tip, with the, with the metal ring. I wanna come up and outward here. Now, from the spearing position, I'm going to move up and advance in a little bit to a cat stance, and then an upward diagonal. You wanna hoist with the staff, okay? Don't worry about trying to swing this staff end out. Think of using the staff itself to block. This would be similar to like an outward block, okay? However, we can use this to hit to the head with the staff or to fling the section and hit them in the head, All right? Once we've hit here, I'm going to drop down to a kneeling stance. Swing across, one, two. So we're going for the legs here. We're going for the shins, we're going for the knees. We're trying to hit towards the legs. It's mean, it's not very nice. <laughs> Okay, so from our poke, advance, upward, outward. Now, one, two. So I end up with the staff back and chambered. Okay, so it's on my right side here. If I'm facing towards you, from my initial poke, I step up, hit up high, one, two, down low. From this position, we're going to swing again inward. We're going to hit up towards the head towards the temple, or if they have their hands up, we're gonna punish the hands. Try to make them drop their, whatever is in their hands or drop their hands all together, okay? So from the top, we'll go from here, from the poke, advancing, up, one, two. Now drop this leg back. We're gonna go to a bow stance and we're going to hit 
to the temple, hit towards the head here, and then from this position, we're going to do one more up, and then we're going to swing straight down, okay? Now this we can tie together and let the staff swing a little bit more. But again, up and then down. Hitting with the last section of the staff, anything from here is bonus. All right, so again, we have poke, moving in, catch stance, then low, low, head up, down. Now, once you get that down, you wanna start speeding it up. So again, we have poke, step in, one, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so there you have it. A nice combination to focus on the practical side. It's not all about the spinning with this staff, even when we have the free end swinging. Now there's two ways that I'd like you to practice this because when it comes to actually using the two section staff, you do have options available. One way is to try to use that, that snapping leverage to swing the free section around. This is kind of the main thing. This is kind of the thing that everybody tries to do right away. That's very useful. However, I also want you to try to practice as if this section were not there. So you're actually just trying to hit with the front end of the staff. This is this little extra length of the staff. Then anything that hits with this free section is bonus striking. You'll notice a difference in feeling, but you also will notice a difference in the technique itself. When you're trying to use this as a practical weapon, if you aim here, this will bend around the corner and hit. If you try to do a flick at the last second to hit with this one, it's okay, but that shouldn't be your main purpose of swinging the staff. So really pay attention to that. Also, when it comes to disarming, people try to aim with the chain to try to wrap around somebody else's weapon. That's a poor way of doing it because although it may work sometimes, it's not guaranteed. What you should actually be aiming with is just this last tip of the staff here. So you actually wanna be aiming with the shackle and not the chain because once you do strike, this will swing around and that's when it will wrap, okay? so. Two really good tips there. Those are things that I don't usually talk about in these videos. It's something that's better you experience in person, but this is something you can practice on your own if you do it safely. Try to set up a stick outside, maybe have a wooden dummy that you can make yourself, or just go for tree branches and see how you can strike with this and how you can get it to wrap around the branch. Okay, so some homework for you guys, make it practical, focus on the spinning stuff to add to the practical, but put that first, okay? If you guys like this video, hit the like button, and as always, be sure to subscribe. Till next time, this is Seafood Cuddle. Bye.